Hello everyone, this is Scott Burns from the Rock Source Magazine and you're listening to Rock Talk. On today's episode of Rock Talk, we have the pleasure of chatting with Collective Soul drummer Johnny Rabb. We're going to talk about touring, writing music, things that are upcoming for Collective Soul and more. Johnny joins us on the phone right now, so let's get started. Welcome, Johnny, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Scott. Thanks for having me. It's good to uh, be on the uh, interview here, so we're excited. Just done with about uh, three months' worth of touring so far on the uh, tour, so thank you. Oh, that's great. Great to have you here, man. And yes, you, Collective Soul has been very, very busy. Um, like you mentioned, the touring, you just wrapped up a co-headlining tour with Three Doors Down. How did that run go for you? That was fantastic. Uh, we really get along with the guys great. They have so many great songs. I mean, both bands combined, were, it was such a fun um, mix of music. You know, you've got our catalog plus theirs, and the mix of fans was great. We have some new fans through their base, and um, hopefully they've g- gained some uh, through ours, but I, we just couldn't get along better with the, with all the guys. They're, they're, they're great guys, great players, great band, so... The whole tour was, a, was a, I think, definitely wildly successful. We had a literally three months with a few days in between each month break, but pretty much going, you know, to the wall with the, just rocking the whole time, and uh, really, really enjoyed it. And got to play all over the states with them. That is awesome. Great to hear. Good stuff. And and that busyness, you know, it does not end yet because you now continue with your own headlining tour, which, by the way, will bring us uh, bring you to our area here. Um, and I have to tell you, Johnny, our readers have been asking for more Ontario concerts from Collective Soul, so just saying. Uh, but this show that you'll be in our area will be on October 15th. That's Centre in the Square in Kitchener. So for any of our Rock Source friends listening right now, that's the only place to see Collective Soul in the southern Ontario region for now. So go get your tickets. Um, given how busy you have been with all this touring, what do you like to do on your days off from the road? That's a great question. And first, we are looking forward to getting to Kitchener again. We, you know, did a little Canada run at the beginning of uh, of this uh, before the Three Doors thing, and we didn't get to get there. So we're excited to head up from Michigan and just get that Canada date in there and see you guys. Um, so looking forward to that. A lot of friends there. We uh, days off. Um, you know, everyone kind of does their thing. Sometimes we'll do things as a group. Um, you know, it's football season right now, so we're into the college football watching and mm-hmm. uh, pro football on Sundays and stuff like that. And I like to fish, but there's not a lot of time for that <laughs> necessarily on the days off. So, you know, many times we'll be, you know, resting or um, getting together. You know, I got to catch a couple of baseball games. Nice. Um, so, you know, we just kind of recuperate, and um, hang, we do hang out as a group a lot, though. That's, we, we're like brothers, so in that sense, you can imagine it's just it's a, it's a lot of fun. So there's never a dull moment on the road. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, and, and you kind of you need that downtime, right, and that ability to sort of decompress, step away, recharge the batteries a little so you can come back at it fresh for the next run, right? Well, I think so, yeah. And, and I mean, downtime at home, um, you know, that's when I, you know, Literally in the Home Depot parking lot right now. <laughs> so doing a thing because I got to go get some stuff for Love it. some renovations we're doing on uh, light renovations on. So it, it turns into real life, and you know I have kids and yep. love them and uh, love my wife and family. So that's that's the this last seven days off the road has been kind of playing catch up with family and uh, enjoying that time and getting the house and I'm also building a studio. So that's oh nice. It's a lot of work, but it's 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 all worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all worth it. Yeah, all good stuff. All good stuff for sure. So speaking of touring and the craziness and the busyness and stuff, yeah. what is the craziest or even maybe just the funniest thing that happened to you or the band while you've been on the road? Oof. I, and we, we have a, there's no, we love humor. That's number one. So craziest <laughs> or funniest, it's hard to put a pin in that one to say mm-hmm. what's the funniest, but there's mm-hmm. just been, uh, and we have a lot of jokes together. We have a lot of um, fun together on the shows. We had a, a, a great moment, though. I thought that was um, memorable. Like, as of recently, we had Chet Roberts from Three Doors Down during the uh, end of our show. We were playing Joe behind the video wall, had a uh, 
a little uh, monkey puppet, and he was, uh, during the show, came up behind the video wall and was like part of the show, if you will, on the final couple shows, and <laughs> just cracked us up. And, Love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not even a not even a prank. It was actually I almost want him to be part of the show now. It's so funny. Oh, that's uh, good. Stuff like that. Stuff like little, you know, like yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I think it was funny because somebody had said Instagram. They said, "Was I the only one that saw this?" And you see the post, and it's it just cracked me up because I could see it right from behind the drum. So and <laughs> Chet's so funny. And uh, as I said, all of us thr- thrive on humor and jokes and having fun. So it just it added to the. Oh, there, there's a book worth of stuff, though. Uh, <laughs> I we bet. talk for hours about the funny stuff we've done. So <laughs> I, I, I bet you probably yeah. got, probably got a million of those. Yes, absolutely. So, switch gears here a little bit. When it comes to songwriting, perhaps um, is this an ongoing process? Does the band sort of manage uh, to write and record while touring? Some bands will have like a mini studio in the back of the tour bus, etc. Or does the band kind of set aside time uh, to write once off the road? I think it's the latter. It's the uh, setting time off the road from touring while Ed, uh, you know, I've never seen anything like it. He can write a song a day if he wanted, and all of them yeah, seem yeah. to really be good. What I mean by that is there's, it's not just, he's not just going through the motions. He has stories that he's telling, mm-hmm. um, and he, he's such a, he really is a, a, a true artist and songwriter, so he's always yeah. working. Um, he'll use something as simple as his iPhone or something to catch the idea with acoustic and vocal. And, yep. you know, like this year we went to New Jersey for about two weeks and recorded, um, during the off touring. And we've got about 19, not about, we have 19 songs recorded and finished for release next in 2019. Beautiful. And, um, that's the 25th anniversary of the band. Yes. And, uh, in that case, you know, Edge shows us the songs in the studio and we then, um, the arrangement could either be fully there or partially there, but it's, you know, Ed's the majority songwriter and coming up with the ideas. So then we come up with the parts and obviously he's producing, we're all producing together. And um, then comes kind of the fun and magic. We're playing all live in a room. We definitely play live. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not each, you know, member by themselves tracking. It's it's really a true live experience in the studio. Right, a collective um, experience, basically. Pretty pretty awesome. I mean, I've done a lot of studio work. Yeah, yeah, and I've done a lot of, you know, work in a studio where it might be an overdub thing. And in this band, we're we are playing as a group, and I'm proud of the parts that Ed lets me come up with, or that he encourages me to come up with. And everybody's got their own role within it, and it, it's the outcome. I mean, I'm very excited. I heard some of these mixes actually on the bus. Yep. Uh, and ve- was extremely looking forward to uh, the release of these songs next year. That sounds great. So for all the Collective Soul fans listening right now, get ready for that one. And I guess, you know, you guys have the recipe down. You have what works for you, right? So that, that sounds excellent. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, the live, the, quickly, the live album that came out, too, is a great representation of where the band's at as, as far as tightness. And, uh, man, this, this this tour coming up, a little uh, seeing you guys up there, we are going to be ready to go because we've been hitting it, and the uh, awesome. band could not be tighter, in my opinion. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, you touched on it just a second ago when you were when you were talking and, you know, looking ahead with the – with the you know 2019 and 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 the 25th anniversary is going to be celebrated and you know I mean way to go guys that's awesome I mean this kind of long, longevity uh, I think is to be commended in this business. Um, what do you think uh, gives a band the ability to have that kind of staying power? Well, I totally that's a great question and uh, I'm happy to say that I've been with the band for seven years mm-hmm. and you know all all respect to the other people that have been involved in Collective Soul, the other drummers, and, yep. um, you know, I'm playing some of their parts, and, and it's exciting to do that, and then I'm playing my own parts with See What You Started By Continuing album. Uh, it is, uh, I think, the, the, the joy of it, to be honest with you. Right. To Ed and the guys still have the joy of doing it. It's, it's not a grind. It's, we, as I said, if we, if we didn't get along on the road, uh, I don't think we would it would be as easy. And I think everyone gets along so incredibly well that that's the the key. It's human beings. And as I said, I know don't usually, I'm not the guy that uses the term bro, you know, Hey bro. (laughs) But I will say in this sense, the guys are really are like second brothers to me. And I know that Jesse and the guys would, would say the same thing. And there's the other part is like, we go do stuff 
when we're not on the road. So that says something too. Like we'll actually plan, you know, Ed's nice enough to plan some trips that we do together and include the, the, the dad's, you know, fishing trip or like a hangout. Oh, and it's that's... really, really a cool thing. So when yeah, you're that's great. on stage, I can just tell you that I think that, the, yeah, the longevity also comes from great writing that Ed and the guys have done in the past. Of course. And I really do believe it's timeless. And I don't, and I don't think, I think it's timeless because, uh, even I was a fan when I was doing my Nashville days in the nineties. I'm like, these guys, this is a different group. Mm -hmm. You know, listen to that original sound. And there's not a night that goes by for, in all honesty, no matter how tiring. And when I say tiring, I just mean body wise, not tired of the music, just tiring maybe of the road that I don't go, man, this is awesome. I've been doing music for 30, 30, 35 years. Right. And this is the highlight for me. I get to work with, with Ed and the guys and it's, to me, that's what it, what it is. It's just camaraderie, yep. the songs, and the energy of the guys. Perfect. Period. The it, whole it's awesome. the whole package. Exactly. Um, if if you were to give advice to any young musician or or a band trying to get their start, you know, given given your experiences and and you know how things can be done really well and and done right, um, what type of advice or what would you tell them? Well, I think that as, first of all, you know, I think it's important to learn music not just one instrument i've been kind of harping on that mm-hmm. uh, in in my industry for a long time i, I play drums but a uh, secondary instrument of piano i'm okay at bass and pretty lame at guitar but <laughs> and i sing a little bit not not like the guys sing but I, I sing a little bit yep i think it's important music is important not just like i play drums or i play guitar but understanding how a song works is important mm-hmm. understanding right what pitch is and, and vocal and, and maybe you have a principal instrument, but that's step one. And then pro professional wise being ready. I have mm-hmm. a lot of students in the past that have said, Oh, I'm, I'm in Nashville. I'm, I'm ready to go. And right. to be totally honest, it's not calling anybody out, but they're, they're not ready. They're not that good yeah. at their instrument. And I feel bad, but that's the prerequisite. You right. Know, being able to play all styles I'm kind of speaking of a drum perspective right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, that's like fair. For me, if you put me in any gig, yeah, you put me in any gig, that's what I that's what I have done and and learned to do is you know you jazz, funk, country, pop, rock. Yep. I mean, death metal is a little bit tough because the double bass speed, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, you have to have, you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, yep, a little bit more well rounded. That's it. They have to be well-rounded, and so when the time comes, if they get the opportunity, they're ready. I've seen so many people either not be ready when the opportunity's there, um, or they get frustrated because they think the opportunity should happen too easily. And that's one thing that I will put to rest pretty quickly, that it, it, it simply, in, in my opinion, does not just happen. You don't just move somewhere and go, I'm going to do this, and all of a sudden you're doing it. You you need to have something, uh, whether it's bartending, whatever your choice is, record store, some sort of mm-hmm. uh, job ready to go that you're willing to do while you're working on your craft and try and get connections going. Ex- um, exactly. That's a big one that they don't teach you in music school. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, no, that's a great answer. And be- yep. Yeah, and besides that, yeah, and then one last thing, mm-hmm. being kind and knowing knowing what how to act you don't want to be somebody if you do get a chance to go on the road yeah you know i've done it you know beyond collective soul you don't want to be the guy that that people are going i can't believe how the person's acting or right tough to be around because as everyone says an hour on stage and 23 pretty much on the bus or hanging out together right (laughs) yeah you better be nice gotcha well that's great great Mm -hmm. answer great advice and kind of tying into to, to our, you know, what I mentioned our readers and our listeners out there and stuff. Um, social media question here. You, you recently launched a contest on your Instagram with hashtag Summer of Sea Soul. How does social media play a part, or, or perhaps how big a part does social media play in what Collective Soul does now? Well, it's a very, very uh, big part. It's a combination. Uh, how things have changed. The band obviously embraces the internet and social media and digital technology now yep. even though you know as when i was not a part of the band obviously the releases were on cassette vinyl mm-hmm. and um 
CDs. And yeah. now we realize that we still like to embrace the future, but also we still, you know, thankfully release vinyl on most of the things and some hard copies of, of CDs. But it's the fans getting involved, the live shows, taking photos, taking some video. We love seeing that. Mm -hmm. And it also keeps the other true fans in touch with what we're doing on the road. Exactly. But to us, massively important. We we love embracing all the stuff. There's no way we can ignore social media. I mean, even as a solo drummer, I have my own social media. It's very important to the other drum mm -hmm. followers and fans for me to put up, you know, whether it's a drum lesson or a technique idea. Um, I think we're all seeing it everybody's posting so it's like yeah instagram to me is kind of the number one youtube obviously yep. in that same thing and of course followed by facebook and twitter yep uh all of them are important and we 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 make sure that we keep active in there and for example that contest is you know kind of let us know what you're seeing show us your photos show us your yeah what, what you're seeing of us and, and exactly then, uh, have a chance to win yep. yeah exactly share your experiences all of that stuff and it just brings you closer to your fan base doesn't it Oh, absolutely. You can, if, you know, we, we see it all. We, I, I want to make that clear. We see, and we love it, the, the, not to be, have a pun, but the writing on the wall. If there's somebody, oh, we love yeah. this part of the show, or a hey, great show, and, you know, we, we, we might not always respond, but that's because it gets busy, but yep. we love seeing that, and that's, that's, that's our favorite part, is, is, is communicating with our fans as well. Perfect, perfect. Well, from one of our Rock Source readers here, um, reader Angie Dillon has a question. Actually, uh, Julie Gravel also had a similar question. That was, which of your songs means the most to you and why? Uh, is there something that's special or something that stands out to you uh, of, of any of the songs that you, sure. that you perform? Well, yes, absolutely. I wish, I wish the guys were kind of here in a group mm -hmm. now to uh, answer that because, you know, I'm sure it means a different thing for Ed being the writer of, of the songs or Will back in the day in the studio or Dean in the studio and live yeah. or Jesse. But for me, it means a lot to, to play a couple things. We've got the back catalog is so crazy. That's one thing I noticed, you know, when joining the guys was, man, their catalog is so vast and um, exactly. amazing. I, I don't have a thought when I hear a song of like, oh, I don't really like that. Or I, there's no negative. It really is just good music. So mm -hmm. when we played December, we play World I Know, or we play Why. December means a lot for me because back in the day in Nash, trying to get my own group signed, and was like, you know, some labels were interested, and I heard I heard December, and I heard Shane's, you know, drumming on that and the production on it. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? Like, I just turn <laughs> up the radio. If it would come on, there's no question the radio would go up. You know, and I admit there's a lot of times I would change the channel if I didn't like something. But any time that came on, I was like, this is what's supposed to be happening. Yeah. So now to be able to play that live, it's always, a, you know, it's, for me, it's always a memory mm -hmm. of literally at that time being like 27, 26, 27 years old. I was like, that's the type of band I want to be a part of. I had no idea, you know, that I would work with them later. But so that means a lot whenever I look across the stage and see the guys and I'm like, but awesome, and I don't take it for granted. I'm like, here I am, and I'm getting to play Shane's parts and do my own, you know, I don't change it much, but, like, it's, it's. I love it. I love the challenge of yeah. of uh, kind of simulating what they did back then, and then I get excited about, hey, we get to play some new songs as well. So I feel like it's a pretty amazing thing for me to play those hits with them nightly, for sure. Beautiful. That's awesome. Good stuff. Well, listen. Thanks so much uh, for doing this, Johnny. Thank you, Scott. It's awesome, man. I appreciate you. No, that is, that is great. Best of luck on the tour as well. Hopefully we'll see you in Kitchener when you guys roll up here. Absolutely see you in Kitchener. And if you want uh, your guys to check out collectivesoul.com for just any info, of, uh, you always have the dates there. So if you're wondering where we're headed, and we're coming there very, very soon on the 15th. So we'll see you then. I hope that's the date. I'm so, I get on the bus and I ride. So we'll see you then. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, you got it. All right, Collective Soul drummer Johnny Rab, folks. Uh, the band released their latest album, a live album appropriately titled Collective Soul Live, just nine months ago. So if you're waiting to see one of the shows on this current tour, pick up that album as it'll be a great way to get primed for the tour to come through your town. And yes, as we just mentioned, uh, the band plays Kitchener on October 15th at Center in the Square. 
get your tickets at centerintheswear.com. And please go to collectivesoul.com to keep up to date with the band and all their news. Thank you to Johnny Rab for joining us. This is Scott Burns, and this has been Rock Talk for the Rock Source magazine.